Hello and welcome everyone to the STM 32L4 MOOC online training. This session will be about USB and will be split in two parts. One covering the HED class and the second covering CDC class. USB stands for Universal Serial Bus. This protocol was developed to create a standard connection between computer peripherals as for example, electronic mouses, keyboards, printers or more recently to connect with smartphones. From the electrical point of view, the USB cable consists of four connectors, two for applying VBUS and ground reference, and two additional for differential signal cables for communication. The first exercise will make use of the HAD USB class, which will allow our discovery board to operate as if it was a computer mouse. The implementation of the USB protocol on the L4 discovery board embeds all peripherals and related components. It uses the 48 MHz MSI clock source embedded in the MCU. As MSI does not fulfill the accuracy needs, to achieve the proper accuracy we will use the LSC to trim and calibrate the internal MSI clock source. No external connection or pull-up resistors are needed as everything is featured on the board to communicate with the USB. In this session, we will learn how to use the HAD class to communicate with a computer. We will learn how to properly set up the USB clock, as the peripheral uses MSI at 48 MHz, as this source is an inaccurate source, to improve its accuracy, we will use LSC to trim it. Additionally, we will configure the joystick as input pins, and each pin will correspond to a mouse coordinate. We will use STM32 to configure the peripherals and generate code for them. So the overall goal is to develop a USB HAT computer mouse application which cursor moves according to the joystick usage. Let's now open STM32 to start generating our code. As a first step we will click on new project. On the new window that opened we will type our part number STM32L476VG We will select the desired part and we will double click on it. On the peripheral tree we will scroll down and on the USB OTGFS we will change the default mode to device only. As a result two pins will light up in green pins PA11 and PA12, which are the communication lines for a USB. We will now scroll up and on the middleware subtree we will look for the USB device where we will change the class to human interface device class. As the next step we will enable the LSE to trim the internal clock source, we will open the RCC we will look for the LSE enabling and we will select crystal ceramic resonator. As a result, the LSE pins will become green, PC13 and PC14. As a last step in the pinout configuration, we need to enable the pins connected to the joystick, which are PA1, PA2, PA3 and PA5. We will configure them as inputs and to do so we need to select them individually as inputs. Let's now switch to the clock configuration tab and as the message displayed on the screen suggests, the default configuration of the clock domain is not aligned with the recent peripheral configuration. STM32 has a mechanism of self-repair, but for demonstration purpose we will manually select the parameters, so we will select no. On the multi-speed internal clock the default frequency is 4 MHz and we will change it for 48 MHz which is the necessary frequency to use with USB. The next step will be to switch the USB clock source to MSI and we will manage to solve all issues identified by the STM32 CubeMX. To finalize the initialization we need to go to the configuration tab, we will select USB and we will check the VBUS sensing feature, as this one is not implemented on the L4 discovery board, it needs to be disabled. 
and on the GPIO peripheral we will set all the joystick pins to pull down. As the pins are floating on VDD level, when a key is pressed the value will go to the logic zero. Then we open the RCC tab and we make sure the MSI Auto Calibration feature is enabled. After everything is configured, we just need to save our project with an appropriate name, select System Workbench as our IDE and we are ready to generate the code. After the code is generated by the STM32CubeMX, we will enter our main.c file. When implementing a new USB HAD mouse program, it is important to know that the transmitter, the mouse, will send periodically to a computer, the receiver, data which in a HAD class context will be called reports. These reports contain four items. The first item contains the status of the buttons, the second, the status of the x-axis, the third, the status of the apes on axis, and the fourth, the screw wheel information. In order to be in line with the protocol, we will create a buffer which will store all the status to be reported to the computer. After initialization of the buffer, we scroll down and on the infinite loop, we will monitor all the status of each joystick button. After checking if a button was pressed, we will take action and send the report to the computer. So for this purpose, we will use the HAL read pin to check the status being the arguments GPIOA and pin 1. We will write an if condition and in case a button was pressed, the function will return true. Then we need to fill a report to be sent to the computer and we expect the cursor to move accordingly to the key which was pressed. So, we will make use of the HAL function USB HAT sent report, which uses as arguments the handler of the USB device, the buffer, and the length of the buffer. We will apply the very same approach to the rest of the buttons using copy-paste. Please don't forget to change the pin numbers to PA2, PA3 and PA5 and please adjust the coordinates accordingly. To finalize we will build our project and we will enter in debug mode. After pressing the resume button, our STM32 L4 discovery board will be ready to control our computer's mouse and it should move accordingly to the keys we are pressing.